and welcome to I Spy. My name is Michelle Stevenson. I'm here with David Kellen, and today we're going to do a little bite size. A little bite size about the last episode about assassination. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a couple of things came up. Like one thing we did mention in it that we didn't get around right. to was the CIA file, a study in assassination. Oh, which wow! Is, it's yep. amazing. I found it online. I will post it to at I Spy Podcast on Twitter, so it'll be there if you For have a read. All yourself. of those people who are so interested in what David gets up to in his little, little. blanket fort. Whee! Yeah, no, we trust. we are literally giving you access. It's an all access it's area. An all access area. You're getting your all access. <laughs> no, this is an amazing little. Is part. it? Because basically they've gone through. It was declassified in 1997, mm. and essentially it was the handbook that they were using during yep. uh, two operations: PB Fortune and PB Success, yeah. which were the attempted coups that they had in Guatemala. Right, which one of them eventually worked. Now, the whole thing is it's got the definitions of different types of assassination. So there's unaware. Do mm. you know what unaware is? Unaware means the target does not know that they're about to be assassinated. I mean, that makes fucking sense. Well, they call... No, 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 no. <laughs> they call that simple. That is a simple assassination. Then you've got somebody who is aware that they're going to be assassinated but is unguarded. That's called a chase. Oh, wow. This is, these are exciting. You know what this sounds like? This sounds like a game show. It sounds like a game show that we should be on. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then there's guarded, which means they're guarded. Right. right? Yeah, good on you, CIA, for being oh, wow. obvious on the last one. I know. Now, the other thing is the different types of assassins. Right. So if you have an assassin that you want to- Ninja? Do you have a ninja assassin? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they have a ninja. No, <laughs> yeah, a ninja. Right. One of the things they say about them is they've got to be intelligent, they've got mm. to be motivated, mm. and they've got to be transient. You don't want somebody that lives there. You want somebody no. that's passing through. Always. Now, if you want to evacuate them, if they're an asset that you want to recover, and that's, again, that's the language they use. They don't talk about it's it. like the if born you want to, identity. Yeah, if you don't, yeah, you're a, a weapon. You're a $30 million weapon system that's gone wrong, right? Yeah. No, or that's malfunctioning. Right. To be evacuated, you're regarded as safe. Okay. Right. To, then there's one, the assassins that are to die in the act, they're called lost, right? And the interesting thing is they talk about the best people to have to be lost assets yeah. are zealots, ideologues, and, of course, anyone seeking revenge. And as soon as I went, anyone seeking revenge, I went, Shinzo Abe. Oh. Mm. Maybe he was an assassin after all, because we said he probably wasn't an assassin. He was just a disgruntled murderer. But then again, a disgruntled murderer would be the perfect way to assassinate someone. Wouldn't you agree, Michelle? Yes. So don't get revengey on me. Or have every- you been reading Reddit again? <laughs> yeah, I have. So <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get past Reddit. Uh, you the- are pulling at threads that don't exist. Oh, no, no, no. I actually started looking at the conspiracy did. Reddit, and I've literally gone, God, I wish I'd started listening to this, because yeah. it's just like- yeah, well, interesting how the all the FBI agents that went into Trump's house, they were all on Epstein's list. It's like, what? 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 I know someone, a Donald, I think it was Donald Trump Jr. said how the FBI, no, the judge had a tenuous relationship with Epstein. Like, Everyone had a tenuous relationship with No, no, with no. Him. So did your father. Yeah. What, what, what? <laughs> I was like, there's a photo of him joking with him. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's gosh. the video of him dancing next to Epstein oh. and there's all the really young people girls around. And I don't know which which is worse, but it's all bad. And Epstein's tongue virtually uh, lolls out of his head. It's awful. Anyway, let's not talk about now, Epstein. Now, getting Go back ahead. to assassination. Yeah, digress. Yeah, let's, get, let's get back to something more moral, like killing people. Yes, right? I find it way more moral. It then goes down through the different techniques you can use. Great. Manual, which is choking or bashing with your bare hands. Yeah, okay. Right? Accidental. Pushing them in front of a train is a fun one. Oh. Right? Drugs or poison. That's pretty simple. Though they also say drugs are okay. You've got to, if you're going to drug someone, what you want to do is you want them to mm. like have a reputation of being either an alcoholic or a drug user. Right? Edged. So using a knife. Blunt. Using a mace. Firearms. Guns. Yeah, guns. <laughs> explosives. Uh, and of course, as we mm. said with guns, what is the most effective weapon to use and the most successful weapon used is a gun? Pistol from arm's length. Yes. Right? And explosives. Yeah, they're really tricky. Like explosives get- and I feel like that you don't really want to take that route. Essentially with explosives, the biggest problem is how do you trigger them? Yes. And that's why- And other people can get caught up in the- Other people get caught yeah. up. Well, that's that's if you want collateral damage as well. Mm. Um, the other thing with explosives is they basically say the best way to do it is to be yep. holding it. Don't throw it. And that was an interesting thing. Gavrilo Princip, when he assassinated the Archduke Ferdinand, the first attempt on the Archduke was a bomb that was thrown at the car and- 
basically fell was, off it. it was, no, it was battered <laughs> away, and it's they, they reenact it in The Kingsman, right? Which is a great film. It's by a the great way. film. Oh my god, that's so 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 good. In go- gory though, like there's a oh lot. My god. It's like it's intense. Oh, that halfway bit in the, the violence. halfway through. Oh man, that, you know my wife actually turned around and went, "This movie's terrible. I love it." Oh, it's violent though oh. in a way where you don't really get grossed out by it. Oh it's yeah, just, it's a lot. Also, like. Emotional, brilliant. Yes. Anyway, back, back to assassination. Oh, my God, we keep digressing. Keep digressing. Go. There was one that wasn't on the list, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah. They didn't put it in, was the assassination of someone's reputation. Compromise. Oh, oh, that's a we good attention- one. Yeah, I'm very good yeah, at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm actually doing an interview about honey traps uh, with the Australian newspaper later on this week. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Like I know about honey traps. I know, and I'm like, um, what about me? Yeah. Uh, what do you know about honey traps? <laughs> Ever been in one? Not as much as you. <laughs> They're very sticky. Yeah. You feel dirty afterwards. <laughs> Funnily enough, I attract a lot of ants afterwards. Anyway. Uh, yes. And now, bears. Lots of bears. The other thing that came out that's really interesting was, of course, digging mm. into this file. And this isn't part of the file, but one of the things that's come out is how the CIA are now getting their work around from the executive orders, you know, 11905, the ones banning mm. them from – assassination. And the interesting thing is there was a study done where they've gone, the CIA have basically come up with a couple of workarounds. One is contractors. So they were getting people like Blackwater, you know, the yes. security guys. They're getting they used them for the war as well. Oh, well, they were using them in yeah. um, in Iraq quite a lot. But well, they, we have contract. We use contractors as well. Yeah, not to that extent, mm. right? The other thing was they were third party, so either mm. local resistance units yep. or organised crime. Yeah, they're all they're always you will, get, you will get out of jail if you kill this person. But the big one is a thing called JSOC. Ever heard of JSOC? No, what's a JSOC? JSOC, they're really comfortable in winter. <laughs> right, no, the JSOC is the Joint Special Operations. Command. Yeah, right. right. So it's the United States Special Ops Overgroup. It includes the Navy SEALs, yep. or as they like to call themselves now, DevGru. That includes the Delta Force, which is the Army, Air Force Special Operations, and a few other bits and pieces. Right. Now, the interesting thing is what the CIA do now, if they want someone whacked, and Al Zawahiri is a great example of that, the CIA sit there and they go, here's all the intelligence we know. There's a great photo of Joe Biden sitting at the table just but well, giving yeah. approval for it with the little box, the yep. wooden box on the table. That was the scale model of the house. Wow. Right. It came in a little box and everything. How cool is that? Right. So basically what they do is they go, this is all the intelligence. Yep. This is how we think you should take him out. JSOC, and they hand it over to the military. And the military go, yeah, okay, let's take this to the president. And like the president, the CIA, and JSOC sit around. They go, do it, right? Or it would be, Joe, 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 wake up. <laughs> wait, wait. And he'd wake up and then he'd be like, because <coughs> he's always got COVID. Yeah, puts on his really cool Ray-Bans. He goes, go for it. Tries, tries to put on his jacket but can't. <laughs> puts, <laughs> Have you seen that vision? Yeah. He's like, uh, points, uh, his, uh. points his finger and goes, <laughs> And America, this is why you never, ever, ever vote in elderly people. Oh, well, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, right, so anyway, mm. they do that. JSOC take care of it. Boom. Yep. The interesting point, and this is why this little relationship between the CIA and JSOC are brilliant. The CIA answer to the Intelligence Oversight Committee in Congress. Right. JSOC do not. JSOC answer to the Military Oversight Committee in Congress. The Intelligence Committee and the Military Committee do not share intelligence. Wow. So basically the CIA, you go, yeah, well, you know, he was a really bad guy and we had to take him out because they always smoke. <laughs> yeah. Spies always smoke, you know. All right. Why does he sound like a like an old – Because they all are. <laughs> no, right. No, he sounds like, the, you know, like one of those old school kind of like – Let me tell you about it. I'm going yeah, yeah. <laughs> to make you enough you can't refuse. <laughs> oh, yeah, now he's Marlon Brando. That's right. Like what's going on? <laughs> they, they all are. They're all Marlon Brando. Okay, great. Right. Then, you know, did you assassinate him? We did assassinate him. No, sir, we did not assassinate him. They were taken out in a military exercise. Sir. Right, because that's how all military people talk. So this is you the- can't handle the truth. <laughs> you can't handle this assassination. <laughs> right. So that's the really right. interesting thing. Yep. One other thing that came in, and it yep. was from one of our listeners, from Martin Murray. Uh, yep. Thanks for listening, Martin, and thanks for passing it to us. First time listener at Ice Boy Podcast. Yep. Right about drone pilots. Okay. Drone pilots are suffering terribly at the moment from what they oh, call sniper syndrome. I'm so sad for or that. a moral injury. Oh, does, are their thumbs hurting? No, this is the thing. Everyone sort of went, if they're drone pilots, they, it, it's fine. They can mm. kill people at range and it won't bother them. Snipers suffer from a real problem when they shoot somebody yep. from a long distance. There is no inherent threat to the sniper. 
Right. And, you know, your fight flight instinct isn't kicked in. Mm. Right. You're just, I'm going to pull the trigger and kill this guy. And they have a lot of PTSD with those soldiers. Yep. The same thing's happening with pilots. I mean, it makes sense, but I think your PTSD is probably a little less than if you actually did hand to hand combat. So No, it's it's actually really, they're losing more drone pilots than they would normal pilots. Yeah, because. Simply because of PTSD, because they're killing people and then having this huge moral dilemma of this person is. Because this is what I, t- I tried to tell you about drones, because people aren't seeing the people there's no real life consequences exactly. when they're on the ground exactly so then they have like this crazy PTSD that's coming yeah. from yes yeah that no, makes no, no, sense no. also I do think it takes a, a certain kind of person to fly a drone as opposed to a person who's going to be hand to hand combat do oh most I mean? definitely like they're two different people oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah totally but I, I just wanted to say yes this actually confirms what you were saying great right it's not as good as everyone thought no and Michelle's always right Michelle yes yes correct every woman is always right correct thank you Thank you.